Good morning, class. Today we are going to begin a new topic, unit number two, and it is a prose. The title of the prose is "The Night the Ghost Got In," written by James Grew Thurber. So, from the title itself, we are understanding that this story is something related with the ghost. Okay, what do you mean by ghost? Ghost means something thrilling. Okay. um actually the story of the 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 content of the story is completely contrasting with the title okay so it is fully a comical story actually i cannot reveal the secret now we'll just enter into the lesson and enjoy it okay so listen carefully students let's start the lesson okay class uh, before going into the lesson we have to learn about the author or the person who has written the lesson okay so um, uh, let's learn about the author okay look at the sentence given there james grew thurber was born on 1894 till 1961 he was alive and uh, he was an american cartoonist author humorist journalist playwright and celebrated wit okay so cartoonist is cartoonist in the sense uh, the person who draws cartoon in newspapers journals and all okay so author means the person who writes essays lessons or a prose okay then um, humorist humorist in the sense the person who writes comical stories and comical uh, skits okay then journalist journalist means it is more or less like a reporter okay then a playwright playwright in the sense the person who writes play plays means drama then uh, he is a celebrated wit who is a wit a wit is a person who makes humor or who who makes comical stories or who act who acts or who creates comics so those persons are called as wits then look at the next sentence he was best known for his cartoons and short stories published in the new yorker magazine such as the cat bird seat and collected in numerous books so he was a renowned or well known cartoonist and short story writer his stories are published in which magazine the new yorker magazine okay so one of his favorite collection is the cat bird sees so this is an outline of the author james grew thurber okay have you understood yes okay class before entering into the lesson it is very important to learn the glossaries okay the the key words or the important words or the hard words which are present in a particular lesson so that is very important to understand the meaning of the words and by that we can understand the entire story very clearly okay so that is the purpose of giving glossary for every lessons so from that we can learn new words or new usage of a particular word okay so now let's get into the glossary look at the first word that is hula balu that is a verb what is the meaning lot of loud noise made by people who are excited so hullabaloo is nothing but the noise made by people who are excited okay so look at the next word that is patrol man that is a noun and what do you mean by a patrol man a patrolling police officer okay A, a police officer who is doing a patrol who's who's coming around okay so look at the next one that is attic attic is a noun okay so what do you mean by attic a space or a room inside or partly inside the roof of a building so uh, Uh, in our houses there will be shelves over the uh, uh, wall okay so we'll keep all those unused things there so like that in uh, foreign countries uh, there will be rooftop uh, attics so in that place they'll they'll store the things 
they will be using later okay so that place that particular place is called attic i have given a picture of attic in the uh, upcoming lesson okay you 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 will understand what look at the next word slamming slamming is a verb what do you mean by slamming shutting a door or window forcefully and loudly so slamming in the sense we are closing or uh, we are uh, we are like with a force we are closing a window or a door loudly okay so that is slamming so look at the next one gruffly gruffly is an adverb meaning sadly okay look at the next one intuitively okay so it is an adverb uh, what is the meaning without conscious reasoning or instinctively understand so look at the next one whammed whammed is a verb meaning is struck something forcefully struck strike something forcefully okay so look at the next word be weld be weld be weld is a verb the meaning is reduced to a sloping edge clear so the next word is rending rending is actually a verb and the meaning of rending is tearing to pieces so it is an action of tearing a piece of paper or a cloth into pieces so that is what called rending so look at the next word yanked yanked is actually a verb and uh, the meaning is pulled with a jerk so the action of pulling something with a jerk is called yanked okay so look at the next word next word is sitar sitar is a noun and sitar is nothing but a musical instrument consisting of a flat wooden sound box with numerous strings stretched across it placed horizontally and played with fingers so sitar is basically an a musical instrument i have given the picture of sitar in the upcoming lesson so you can see it and learn so look at the next word that is guinea pig guinea pig is actually a noun and the meaning is it is a domesticated tailless south american rodent originally raised for food so uh, the other name of guinea pig is like hamster okay so uh, it is uh, it is a rodent it is an animal actually um, it will look like a rabbit or a mouse okay um in hollywood films uh, they'll be showing in some films they they'll be showing this animal okay uh, look at the next word that is hysterical hysterical is an adjective and the meaning is affected by wildly uncontrolled emotion so that is what we call hysterical so look at the next word that is creaking creaking is a verb and the meaning is making a squeaking sound when being moved um for example while opening a door or like uh, moving your bed or your furniture some squeaking noise will come right so that noise is otherwise called as creaking so that action is called as creaking okay so look at the next word indignant indignant is an adjective and the meaning is feeling or showing anger or annoyance at which at what is perceived as a unfair treatment okay so indignant is nothing but an adjective at uh, meaning is showing anger or annoyance annoyance okay so look at the next word that is holster holster is a noun meaning a holder made of leather for carrying handgun so uh, uh, the policeman will have will have a pouch like thing to have their pistol right in their uh, Uh, in the belt so that bag that leather uh, leather material is called as holster okay so look at the next word that is rafter rafter is also a noun and the meaning is a beam forming part of the internal framework of a roof okay rafter is nothing but a beam of a roof on which the roof is held so that is what we called as a rafter look at the next word deserter deserter is also a noun and the meaning is a person who leaves the armed force without permission so this is what the the, the person 
who leaves the armed force without permission illegally leaving the armed force so that thing is called as that that person is uh, named as deserter so deserter is the noun so children these are the most important words in this lesson and we have to learn the meaning carefully to understand the lesson completely clear yes okay class now let's get into the lesson um please listen carefully keep your eyes on the lines while i'm reading then only you can understand what i'm trying to explain okay so yes look at the first line the ghost that got into her house on the night of november 17 1915 raised such a hullabaloo of misunderstandings that i am sorry i didn't just let it keep on walking and go to bed its advent caused my mother to throw a shoe through a window of the house next door and ended up with my grandfather shooting a patrolman i am sorry therefore as i have said that i ever paid any attention to the footsteps they began about a quarter past 1 o'clock in the morning a rhythmic quick cadenced walking around the dining room table so listen carefully this is the opening scene of the story okay so the author is the author is the narrator of the story and he is narrating okay so the ghost that got into our house on the night of november 17 1915 so the action the scene actually takes place on november 17 1915 so uh, the authors or the narrator's house was haunted or uh, a ghost entered into their house and created a hullabaloo hullabaloo we have seen the meaning of hullabaloo already so it is a loud noise made by people due to excitement so it created the hullabaloo of misunderstandings and the author feels sorry that he didn't just keep on walking and go to bed but he listened to a footstep and he was distracted and he was attracted towards the footstep and in the advent of discovering the owner of the footstep some commotion has been has happened in their house and uh, it led to their mothers and made her to throw a shoe to the window of the next window of the next house and created some commotion there some problem there and it ended up with their grandfather shooting one of the patrolman who is a patrolman we have seen the meaning of patrolman already a patrolman a patrolman is no nothing but a, a policeman who is on a patrol okay so um they began about a quarter past 1 o'clock in the morning a rhythmic quick cans walking around the dining table so at what time the whole thing happens at quarter past 1 o'clock in the early morning okay so 1 o'clock in the morning at which place around the dining room table so the whole this is the introduction or this is the first scene of the story so are you clear about the whole thing what happened so the ghost entered on november 17 1915 it created some commotion some problems and some misunderstandings and halabalu and uh, it made their mother to throw a throw a shoe through the window of the next door and broke their window glass and uh, it ended up with the grandfather shooting one of a patrolman okay so these are the problems created by the ghost clear yes okay class now let's move on to the next paragraph so listen carefully my mother was asleep in one room upstairs my brother herman in another and grandfather was in the attic in the old walnut bed which as you will remember 
once fell on my father. I had just stepped out of the bathtub and was busily rubbing myself with a towel when I heard the steps. They were the steps of a man walking rapidly around the dining table downstairs. The light from the bathroom shone down the black steps, which dropped directly into the dining room. I could see the faint shine of plates on the plate rail. I couldn't see the table. The steps kept going round and round the table. At regular intervals, a board creaked. A board creaked when it was trod upon. So this is the next scene. Um, actually, he's telling about all the persons in his house. Um, his mother was asleep in one room upstairs, and my, his brother Herman in another room, and his grandfather was in the attic. Attic is nothing but look at the picture I have given there. Attic is like the rooftop of a house, not uh, like our house. Uh, this house is like somewhat western in a, in foreign in abroad and all. The house will be like this, and there will be a storage place upstairs. So there will be a ladder there. We have to climb upstairs, and we we can uh, store things or we can stay there up. Okay. So like that in that place, his his grandfather is. Uh, uh, is sleeping there uh, in the attic in the old walnut bed. Walnut bed is nothing but the bed that is made of wal walnut tree or walnut wood. Okay, as you will remember, once fell on my father. So that bed once fell on his over his father. So he is remembering the thing. Okay, what the narrator is doing? He was just stepped out of his bathtub and he was busily rubbing with his towel. Okay. So at that time only he he heard the mysterious steps of a man walking rapidly around the dining table. Okay, so the dining table, the dining room was downstairs, and he was in the upstairs. Okay, so the light from the bathroom actually it is it is showing the uh, steps in a dimmed state, and uh, uh, the 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 light actually glares over the shining of plates that were arranged in the plate rail okay so he couldn't see the table but uh, he was he can he can only see the plates shining due to the dim light of the bathroom okay okay then uh, uh, then uh, he he was he was listening he was hearing the steps it was going around and round the dining table and he heard a creaked sound what do you mean by creaked actually we have seen the meaning of creaked it was a noise made by a furniture okay so he was hearing the quick noise on the steps going around the dining table. So this was the second scene, or this is the explanation of the whole paragraph. Clear? Yes. Okay, class. Now let's move on to the next scene. Uh, so this is the next paragraph, and uh, the author or the narrator is explaining about his weird experience in the midnight in his house okay he suspects some ghost or some thief entered into their house and uh, he was listening to the creepy noise of the steps of someone going round and round around their dining table so now let's listen to the next uh, next paragraph look at the line i supposed at first that it was my father or my brother roy who had gone to the indiana police but were expected home at any time. I suspected next that it was a burglar. It did not enter my mind until later that it was a ghost. After the walking had gone on for perhaps three minutes, I tiptoed to Herman's room. I hissed. So that noise, that, that sound is nothing but a, a recreation of a, a secret uh, calling of your friend when you are not you are, you are not supposed to call loudly you are not allowed or you want to call him secretly you will make some noise right like like that so that noise so 
that word p s s t that no, that sound is nothing but an interjection and the, that denotes a noise i hissed in the dark shaking him of he said in the low hopeless tone of a despondent beagle he always half suspected that something would get him in the night i told him who i was there's something downstairs i said he got up and followed me to the head of the back staircase the steps had ceased herman looked at me in some alarm i had only the bath towel around my waist he wanted to go back to the bed i gripped his arm so now the comic begins first uh, the narrator suspects or he he supposed he thought that it was his father or his brother roy who went for the movie indiana police and expected to be home at any time so next he suspected that it was a burglar who, who is a burglar actually a burglar is nothing but it, it is a different type of word used to mention thieves okay so someone breaching our house and and uh, like looting all our um, all our uh, things in the house okay so initially he thought it was his father next it, he thought it was his brother who a brother roy who went for the movie indiana police was returned and then only he suspected that it could be a burglar okay so next it did not enter my mind until later it was a ghost so later he thought that why can't it be a ghost so he suspected that it might be a ghost okay then what he did he tiptoed tiptoed in the sense he, it is like a walking very secretly in with the tip of our toes so that's that's what called tiptoed tiptoed to herman's room who is herman herman is his brother okay herman's room and he called him secretly by shaking and uh, his brother is all is always a suspected suspecting or a, a, he's like a um he, he always afraid he will be always afraid of something uh, will get him in the night okay so he is like that kind of a person and imagine waking up some some uh, some person who who will be always afraid to get up in the night so it will be very scary right okay so same same thing he was very uh, surprised and he was very afraid that someone has uh, shaked him and uh, once the narrator told that it was him his brother then only he raised up and uh, they both went outside because he told that he, he told his brother that there was something downstairs something he he told that there was something downstairs in the sense he suspecting a ghost or a burglar okay then he followed his brother and both of them standing in the back of a staircase the staircase ended herman looked at some alarm okay so herman looked at his brother who the narrator because he was just coming out of his bath tub right he was only wearing a towel it is around his waist so <laughs> he got panicked and uh, immediately he said i wanted to go to bed okay but the narrator gripped his arm clear yes okay now now it is the next uh, paragraph uh, listen carefully students <clears throat> there's something down there i said instantly the steps began again circled the dining room table like a man running and started up the stairs towards us heavily two at a time the light still shone palely down the stairs we saw nothing coming we only heard the steps herman rushed to his room and slammed the door i slammed shut the door at the stairs top and held my knee against it after a long minute i slowly opened it again there was nothing there there was no sound none of us ever heard that ghost again so 
This is the next scene. He again tells to his brother Herman that there's something down there. Instantly the steps began again circle the dining table. So immediately after he said to his brother that there's something there. The steps again started going round around the dining table and now it is coming towards them. Uh, it is like the, the, the stairs. Okay, the, it is, the sound comes like the man is running and moving towards them in the stairs heavily. Okay, two at a time. Which means there were two persons. They are imagining, okay, they are imagining that there were two persons and they are climbing towards them. The light still shone palely down the stairs. The light was so dim and they can't see anything hardly. Okay. Then we saw nothing coming but only heard the noise coming towards them. They didn't see anything but the noise is like something is or someone is coming towards them. So immediately, uh, immediately Herman rushed to his room and slammed his door. What do you mean by slammed? Slammed means closing or like uh, closing a door or a window forcefully with a loud noise so in fear what he what he has done he just ran into his room and just slammed his door and the narrator also did the same and he he also entered into his room and just slammed the door and kept his knee against the door so what will happen so he thought that no one can open the door if he if he keeps his knee like that against the door nobody can open the door okay so after a long minute he slowly opened it again opened the door and just just uh, peeked out of the door and saw there was nothing there was nothing no sound okay they did not hear any noise after that uh, or any ghost they didn't see any ghost there okay clear so this is the explanation of this paragraph so yes students uh, now from now the story is going to be very interesting so please listen carefully okay so uh, so this scene is something comical and actually it is interesting so please listen look at the lines the slamming of the doors had aroused mother. She peered out of her room. What on earth are you boys doing? She demanded. Herman ventured out of his room. Nothing, he said gruffly. But he was in color a light green. What was all that running down, running around downstairs? Said mother. So she had heard the steps too. We just looked at her. Burglars, she shouted intuitively. I tried to quieten her by startling lightly downstairs. Come on, Herman, I said. I'll stay with mother, he said. She's all excited. I stepped back onto the landing. So, what happened is, the slamming or the noise of the slamming of the door aroused mother so she was sleeping in one room upstairs right so this noise awakened her and she peered out of her room and asked what on earth are you boys doing she demanded she asked them what are you boys doing here and um, then then um, herman says nothing in a gruffly manner what do you mean gruffly that is sadly. Do you remember the meaning? Gruffly is sadly. Okay. So he was in the color of light green, which means he was very pale. He became very pale due to fear. He was very much afraid. Okay. <clears throat> what was all that running around downstairs? She asked. So what does it mean? So mother also heard the noise. Okay. So immediately after they both looked at each other she shouted burglars okay intuitively means what what is the meaning what do you mean by intuitively can you remember yes without consciousness or reasoning okay without conscious reasoning without knowing if someone is claiming something then it will be we can say it as intuitively okay so 
she, uh, the narrator tried to quieten or uh, tried to stop her from shouting okay and he called his brother come on herman i said and uh, i'll stay with mother who said herman okay he was already afraid of these things and uh, uh, now his mother was like not uh, she, she was also afraid so using this uh, uh, situation he is telling that i'll stay with mother because she is all excited then what happened the narrator stepped back onto the landing so this is what happened in this scene are you all clear yes now let's move on to the next scene um listen carefully look at the paragraph don't either of you go a step said mother we'll call the police since the phone was downstairs i didn't see how we are going to call the police nor did i want the police but mother made one of her quick incomparable decisions she flung up a window of her bedroom which faced the bedroom windows of house of a neighbor picked up a shoe and whammed it through a pane of glass across the narrow space that separated the two houses glass tinkled into the bedroom occupied by a retired engraver named bodwell and his wife bodwell had been for some years in rather a bad way and was subject to mild attacks almost everybody we knew or lived near had some kind of attacks so in this scene what uh, what both of them uh, both the mother and uh, the brothers are planning to do something regarding the strangers or the ghosts inside the house so um uh, what the mother is insisting is she wants to call the police uh, and they are thinking that the phone is in the downstairs and they can uh, they can't go down because uh, something was downstairs uh whether it may be a ghost or it may be the burglars okay say they, say they 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 don't know what it is actually okay so uh but the narrator don't want he didn't want to call the police but the mother made a uh, one decision that uh, the uh, immediate decision uh, and she flung up the window of her bedroom and opened the window pane she just took a shoe and she just flung it she just whammed it against the window of the neighboring house which was owned by a retired engraver named bodwell and his house and his wife okay so the glass of the windows tinkled into their bedroom okay um, actually bodwell had been for some years in a rather a bad way and they were uh, they were facing many mild attacks already okay so in that place uh, everybody uh, they know or they lived around or they lived near were uh, subjected to some kind of attacks okay so this is the uh, explanation of this paragraph or this scene what is the meaning of the word whammed whammed we have already seen the meaning of whammed do you uh, remember yes whammed whammed is nothing but struck something forcefully she just whammed she just threw the shoe against the window and it broke the window glasses clear yes okay now it was uh, it is about the next scene uh, listen carefully it was now about 2 o'clock of a moonless night clouds hung black and low bodwell was at the window in a minute shouting frothing a little shaking his fist we'll sell the house and go back to peoria we could hear mrs bodwell saying it was some time before mother got through to bodwell burglars she shouted burglars in the house herman and hi hadn't dared to tell her that it was not burglars but ghosts for she was even more afraid of ghosts than of burglars Bodwell at first thought that she meant there were burglars in his house but finally he quieted down and called the police for us over an extension phone by his bed after he had disappeared from the window 
mother suddenly made as if to throw another shoe not because there was further need of it but as she later explained because the thrill of heaving a shoe through a window glass had enormously taken her fancy i prevented her so yes what they are trying to tell in this scene in this paragraph is now the time is 2 o'clock actually the commotion the problem started at the midnight early morning 1 o'clock and now it's 2 o'clock it is a moonless night and the clouds were dark okay so bodwell after after uh, after the bang or the whammed the window mr bodwell just came out of the window just uh, looked out of the window and uh, mrs bodwell was saying that we'll sell the house and go back to peoria i think peoria maybe their native place and she is desired she is deciding that uh, in this house there will be no peace and they are trying to move out of this place by selling this house okay then uh, then the mother shouted against uh, mr bodwell telling that burglars okay burglars in the house she shouted herman and the narrator were keeping calm because they know the sound made in the the, the the sound that came from the dining area was not burglars but ghosts but why they didn't inform it to their mother is she was more afraid of ghosts than burglars okay then um bo- first bo- initially bodwell thought that there were burglars in his house then he re- then he realized that the burglars are in the narrator's house and immediately he took an extension phone and called the police for them okay then uh, immediately after this scene the mother was again trying to flung a shoe <coughs> against the window later she told the reason that, uh, why because is she was uh, she was she had enormously she had enormous, enormous fun in throwing a in throwing a shoe against a window pane and it was a thrilling experience to her so she was very much interested in throwing a sh- shoe without a reason okay so this made the narrator angry and he prevented her from not doing that thing okay so this is what said or explained in this paragraph clear yes okay now this is the next scene or the next paragraph listen carefully the police were on hand in a commendably short time a ford sedan full of them two on motorcycles and a patrol wagon with about eight in it and a few reporters they began banging at a front door flashlights shot streaks of gleam up and down the walls across the yard down the walk between our houses and board wells open up cried a hoarse voice we are men from the headquarters i wanted to go down and let them in since there they were but mother wouldn't hear of it you haven't a stitch on she pointed out you'd catch your death i wounded the towel around me again finally the cops put their shoulders to our big heavy front door with its thick beveled glass and broke it in i could hear a rending of wood and a splash of glass on the floor of the hall so this scene this scene is the uh, in this scene the police is rushing towards their house and they were in the crime spot in a commendably short period of time just within a few minutes the police came to their place and uh, they came in a ford sedan full of them and two motorcycles and a patrol wagon with eight of them so this is the police squad and they took some reporters with them okay so a few reporters were there they began to bang their front door the the front door was locked from inside so uh, usually it will be locked from inside uh, when people are inside the doors will be locked from inside so they trying to open the door um, they are like shouting open up cried a hoarse voice hoarse voice means it was a harsh or a loud voice and we are men from the headquarters a policeman shouted and uh, the narrator wants to go down and let them in but uh, since some something something 
fishy was down in down their uh, dining area so they couldn't uh, he uh, his mother didn't allow him to go down and uh, uh, she pointed out you catch your death you haven't a stitch on okay so again uh, by saying all these things the author the or the narrator is winding up the towel around him around him again finally the cops put their shoulders to the uh, to the big uh, door and they were banging the door and uh, they beveled thick beveled the glass and broke it in okay do you know the meaning of beveled i have given already what do you mean by beveled reduced to a sloping edge okay clear so now they are uh, they are j- they just broke the door of, and the glass and they could hear the rending of wood and splash of glass on the floor of the hall so this is the scene happened in this part okay clear yes okay class now let's move to the next scene uh, listen carefully their lights played all over the living room and quiz crossed nervously in the dining room stabbed into the hallways shot up the front stairs and finally up the back they caught me standing in my towel at the top a heavy policeman bounded up the steps who are you he demanded i live here i said the officer in charge reported to mother no sign of nobody lady he said must have got away what did he like there were two or three of them mother said oofing and carrying on slamming doors funny said the cop all your windows and doors was locked on the inside tight as thick downstairs we could hear the tromping of the police other police police were all over the place doors were yanked open drawers were yanked open windows were shot up and pulled down furniture fell with dull thumps so here yanked what do you mean by the uh, word yanked i given i have given already in the beginning what do you mean by yanked yanked means pulling to pull something with a jerk okay so in this scene what is happening <clears throat> um the lights the lights of the police officers were uh, were uh, were uh, criss cross nervously in the dining area they stabbed stabbed in the sense they rushed inside the hallways they shot up the front stairs uh, and finally up the back so the uh, the policeman caught the narrator standing in his towel okay one of the heavy policeman asked him who are you and he replied that i live here okay then another police officer reported to the mother that there is no sign of nobody lady he said and uh, he also said must have got away what did he like okay so these words these kind of words are like these these are word slangs and i'll give the meaning of these slang words okay uh, then uh, there were two or three of them the mother replied or so what the mother said she said that there were two or three of them and whooping and carrying on slamming doors a cop said it was funny okay all your windows and doors were locked he said that all your windows and doors were locked from inside then how could someone enter into your house uh, meanwhile uh, in the downstairs the police uh, the other policemen were yanking up the doors and uh, drawers and uh, the windows were shot up and pulled down okay the furniture were uh, made to made to f- fall down with a dull thump so this is the explanation of or this is this this is the occurrence or this is the thing happened in the scene clear yes so yes listen now this is the next paragraph and this is the next next scene uh, listen carefully a half a dozen policemen emerged out of the darkness of the front hallway upstairs they began to ransack the floor pulled beds away from the walls tore clothes off hooks in the closets pulled suitcases and boxes off shelves <clears throat> one of them found an old sitar that roy had won in a pool tournament look here joe he said strumming with strumming it with a big paw <clears throat> the cop named joe 
took it, turned it over. What is it? He asked me. It is an old zitar our guinea pig used to sleep on. I said, it was true that a pet guinea pig we once had would never sleep anywhere except on the sitar. But I shouldn't, I should never have said so. Joe and the other cop looked at me a long time. They put the zitar back on a shelf. So, what they are trying to tell in this scene is, uh, a half a dozen policemen emerged out of the darkness of the in front of the front hallway upstairs. Okay, so half a dozen in the sense, around six policemen came out of the darkness to the up uh, to the hallway upstairs. They began ransacking. They just pulled everything uh, from the shelves. They pulled the uh, suitcases. They tore the clothes uh, hanging in the closets, and they were like demolishing. They were destroying everything in the house and they are searching for the burglars. Okay, one of them found an uh, old zitar which was won by Roy, the narrator's brother, in a pool tournament. Okay, so uh, after taking, after looking at the zitar, uh, the, the, the cop told to another cop, look here, Joe. So th that look here, here. So that's a slang word. I'll explain the meaning later. Look here, Joe, he said, strumming it with a big paw. Big paw here refers to the big hand of that cop. Okay. The cop named Joe took it, turned it over. What is it? He asked me. The cop, Joe, asked the narrator, what is it? And he, the narrator said that it was an old uh, sitar, our old guinea pig used to sleep on. Guinea pig is nothing but, I've give, I have I already given the meaning of guinea pig and also given the picture of a guinea pig. Guinea pig is nothing but an animal, a an, uh, domestic animal, which is most popular in South America and uh, it is mostly used for uh, food, okay. So it is like a, it is like a mix of rabbit and a mouse. <clears throat> so he tells that uh, their pet guinea pig will always sleep uh, uh, on the sitar. And uh, after listening to the, those words, the cops were looking at him, looking at the narrator for a long time and they just kept the sitar uh, in, in one of the shelves and the narrator thought that he shouldn't have told them, told this detail to them, okay, <clears throat> because it was an unnecessary detail, clear. So this is the thing that is explained in this paragraph. I hope you have understood, yes. Okay class, now we are moving on to the next scene or, or the next paragraph. I'll read it once, just listen carefully. No sign or nothing said the cop who had first spoken to mother. The lady seems hysterical. They all nodded but said nothing, just looked at me. In the small silence, we all heard a creaking in the attic. Grandfather was turning over in bed. What's that? snapped Joe. Five or six cops sprang for the attic door before I could intervene or explain. I realized that it would be bad if they burst in on grandfather unannounced or even announced. He was going through a phase in which he believed that General Mayday's men, unsteady hammering by Stonewall Jackson, were beginning to retreat and even desert. So, <clears throat> in this scene, what they are trying to say is, uh, after all the searching process were over, uh, the cops, one of the cops says, no sign of nothing. Uh, then um, the another cop told that the lady seems hysterical. What is the meaning of hysterical? I think we have seen uh, previously in the glossary part. What do you mean by uh, hysterical? Yes. Hysterical uh, in the sense it is affected, uh, it is a, a, a state of a person who is affected by wildly or uncontrolled emotions. Okay, so that is the meaning of hysterical. Uh, once the cop, one of the cops said the lady seems hysterical, uh, pointing to the mother, the others nodded their heads but uh, and uh, they did not say anything and they all looked at the narrator. In the small silence, all of them heard a creaking noise in the attic. 
so creaking in the sense i i have told the meaning already creaking means the uh, the, the, mo the motion the moving uh, sound of a furniture okay so the sound was coming from the attic uh, grandfather was turning in bed so what is the sound the grandfather was uh, sleeping over the attic you remember right so he was turning in his bed uh, one of the uh, cop uh, asked what is that who is that joe so um, the police officer joe inquired what is that and uh, immediately for five or six six cops sprang to the door attic's door before uh, they, they they couldn't uh, they couldn't they, they they did not wait for the intervention or explanation of uh, the narrator and uh, the narrator realized that it will be very bad if they burst into grandfather unannounced or even announced so uh, why because his, his grandfather was in a state of uh, in a phase of life thinking that or imagining that uh, he is living in the olden period and uh, he believed that general made his men unsteady hammering by stonewall jackson okay so uh, he believed that uh, there was a war going between uh, general mayday's men and uh, stonewall jackson and uh, he 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 himself imagined that the cops were the men from uh, the army or or uh, army of general maid uh, who were beginning to retreat and even deserted the army <clears throat> okay clear so uh the grandfather was in a imaginary life or a, he, he thinks himself that those cops were the men of general mede and they are uh, they are like retreating or they are like deserting the army and they are escaping for their life okay so that's what they are trying to do clear yes so next uh, look at the next scene uh, this might be very interesting because uh, now the action begins now the grandfather's action begins so listen carefully when i got to the attic the things were pretty confused grandfather had evidently jumped to the conclusion that the police were deserters from mayday's army trying to hide away in his attic he bounded out of bed wearing a long flannel nightgown over long woolen pants a night cap and a leather jacket around his chest the cops must have realized at once that the indignant white-haired old man belonged to the house but they had no chance to say so back your cowardly dog roared grandfather back to the lines your goddamn lily livered cattle with that he fetched the officer who had found the zitar a flat handed smack alongside his head that sent him sprawling the others beat a retreat but not enough grandfather grabbed zitar's gun from its holster and let fly so this scene contains more action sequences so uh actually the grandfather is living in a phase that uh the men the cops are nobody then uh, they are from the men or they are they are from the army of who general mede and they are running for their life because uh what happened stonewall jackson threatened them okay so this is this is the mentality of the grandfather so when they uh, entered uh, when they entered into the attic the grandfather became very angry and nervous and he concluded that the police were definitely deserted from mede's army and they are trying to hide for their lives in his attic okay so uh, the old man i mean the grandfather was wearing a night dress which means a um, uh, woolen pants night gown and a night cap and a leather jacket okay uh on seeing the dress code uh, itself the cops uh, decided that this old man belongs to the same house and uh, immediately the grandfather got angry and uh, what he told back you all cowardly dogs roared the grandfather he was very much angry and he called them he called all those cops as cowardly dogs because he thought that they are the men of 
general midday and they are learning for their life okay and uh, immediately what he did he fetched a flat handed uh, smack alongside one of the cops head okay he just attacked one of the cops head and uh, that man fell into sprawling okay he went he he was like giddy and he fell down okay uh, immediately what uh, he did is the uh, the other police officers retreated but uh, they were not uh, much uh, they they were not so long but uh, they were very close to him immediately grandfather grabbed the zita's gun from its holster what do you mean by holster a holster is a leather uh, bag in which we will we'll keep the handguns okay so that's what called as hold holster uh immediately the grandfather took out the gun from the holster and let it fly he started shooting okay clear so this is what happening in the scene so the grandfather immediately jumped into action and he started shooting clear yes okay class now let's move on to the next paragraph uh let's move on to the next scene uh, i'll read it once just listen carefully okay yes the report seemed to crack the rafters smoke filled the attic a cop cursed and shot his head to the shoulder somehow we all finally got downstairs again and locked the door against the old gentleman he fired once or twice more in the darkness and then went back to bed that was grandfather i explained to joe out of breath he thinks you are deserter i'll say he does said joe the cops were reluctant to leave without getting their hand on somebody besides grandfather the night had been distinctly a defeat for them so in this in what happens is uh, the, uh, the the once the grandfather started uh, firing immediately all of them closed their door and they ran back downstairs uh because uh, the attic was completely surrounded with smoke they couldn't see anything so they immediately rushed towards the downside downstairs and uh, uh they they could hear uh, one or twice or thrice the grandfather shot again uh, and then he went back to his bed okay then the narrator uh, caught his breath and he said that it was my grandfather but joe said i'll say he does and then the cops were reluctant to leave without getting their hands on somebody besides grandfather what happens they couldn't find anybody other than grandfather okay they cannot arrest him because uh, uh, he didn't do any anything okay so uh, they were very reluctant that they didn't get anyone uh, and according to that day it was a defeat for them because they couldn't catch anyone clear so that's what told in this paragraph yes Okay class now move on to the next scene uh, I'll read it once just listen carefully Furthermore they obviously didn't like the layout something looked and I can see their viewpoint phony They began to poke into things again a reporter a thin faced wispy man came up to me I had put on one of mother's dress not being able to find anything else the reporter looked at me with a mingled suspicion and interest just what the hell is the real load on here bud he asked i decided to be frank with him we had ghosts i said he gazed at me a long time as if i were a slot machine into which he had without results dropped a coin then he walked away the cops followed him the one grandfather shot holding his now bandaged arm cursing and blaspheming i'm going to get my gun back from the old bird said the sitar cop yeah said joe you and who else i told them i would bring it to the station house the next day so after all these uh, problems and all these commotions uh, they are like uh, coming downstairs and they are searching again around the house uh, at that time a thin faced wispy man a reporter actually he came up to the narrator 
and uh, the narrator was uh, immediately he, he he didn't find any other clothes so with uh, no other way he was trying to wear his one of his mother's clothes and uh, he was facing the reporter <laughs> the reporter looked at him very suspicious and he was he was a bit interested on him okay because a man dressed as woman uh, then uh, um he asked the narrator about the incident what he asked was just what the hell in the real low down here bud is asking what was the thing that really happened here so bud here refers to uh, it is like a friendly tone buddy okay so that's a short form of bud then uh, he just the narrator wants to open up and he just simply said that we had ghosts in our house then immediately the reporter just uh, gazed at him uh, like uh, there is a comparison here uh, he the narrator compares himself with a slot machine in which we we we'll usually put coin and we'll wait for the result uh, do you remember in a, in bus stand and all there will be the machine the slot machine will be there if we put a 1 rupee or 2 rupee coin we'll get a, a small sit and that we'll get some good news and all so like that uh, like that he was looking at the narrator that he had put the coin and he didn't get the result like that uh, he was like just like he was gazing at him for a long time and then he just walked away and the other cops also followed the reporter uh, at the while leaving um, the one who grandfather attacked you remember right uh he with his now bandaged arm he he, he just uh, had a bandage on his arm and uh, he was just cursing and blaspheming he was just uh, cursing and he was like shouting against grandfather and uh, he so he also told that i'm going to get my gun from gun back from the old bird because uh, the gun was with the grandfather uh, he just grabbed from the uh what he was he, he just grabbed from the grab the gun from the holster of this uh, policeman uh, policeman and uh, again he just wants his gun back uh, so uh, he just tries to go back and get the gun but joe uh, was uh, refusing to go back then immediately the narrator says that don't worry i i will bring i would bring it to the station house the next day which means tomorrow i'll bring the gun to the station house itself you don't worry like that he said okay so this is what happening in this scene clear yes okay class now we are coming to the final part this is the last paragraph of the prose uh, just listen carefully there will be a twist in this lesson uh, so uh, please listen carefully i'll read it once what was the matter with that on policeman mother asked after they had gone grandfather shot him i said what for she demanded i told her he was a deserter of all things said mother he was such a nice looking young man grandfather was fresh as a daisy and full of jokes at breakfast next morning we thought at first he had forgotten all about what had happened but he hadn't over his third cup of coffee he glared at herman and me what was the idea of all them cops starry hooting round the house last night he demanded none of you bother to leave a bottle of water beside my bed do you ever realize what it cost of cost for a thirsty man to look for water in the dining room last night he had us there <laughs> so actually um, this is the twist uh, the author has given in this lesson um, uh, i'll just explain it uh, what happens the next day is um, uh, the ma- the mother is inquiring about what uh, what is the matter with that policeman what happened to the policeman and the narrator says that uh, our grandfather shot uh, that policeman thinking that he is a deserter and uh, his mother uh, his mother was just uh, listening to it and he was he, she tells that she, he was a nice looking young man then uh, they find uh, our grandfather coming uh, for the breakfast next morning he was like fresh as daisy and full of jokes 
which means he is very fresh and uh, he, he was not aware of what, what was the thing that happened last night. And um, uh, what uh, the, uh, the narrator and the other members of the family thought was, the grandfather had, for, had forgotten everything that had happened last night. Okay, so, uh, but he did not forget. Over his third cup of coffee, he glad at uh, Herman and the narrator and uh, asked that what was the idea of all the cops starry hooting around the house last night, he asked. So these are uh, these these words are like the slang words. I, I have given the meaning in the last. We'll just discuss then. Okay, uh, and then he added that uh, none of you bothered to leave a bottle of water beside my bed. He asked that uh, none of you bothered about uh, keeping a bottle of water next to my bed. And uh, do you ever realize what is co what it costs for a thirsty man to look for a water in the dining room last night? So. <laughs> So now the grandfather reveals a secret that uh, he was thirsty last night, but uh, both uh, the narrator and uh, his brother, they, they forgot to keep a bottle of water next to the grandfather. So to fetch a bottle of water, he just came downstairs uh, last night and he was roaming around the <laughs> dining table and the noise they heard, the narrator and the mother, and even uh, Herman, the brother of uh, the narrator, all those people heard the voice, the noise of the footsteps. And those footsteps belong to the grandfather. Actually, he was searching for water last night and they thought it was a ghost or burglar or some other thief and they immediately called the police and all those commotions happened. So, all these things happened because of the grandfather's thirst. So. There was no ghost or burglar in their house. So what happened is they didn't, they didn't what research or they didn't realize what actually was happening there. So that's the problem. So without knowing what is the reason for the sound, they just called the police and they created so many problems and uh, it uh, led to a shot of a policeman. Okay. So this was happening due to the carelessness of who the narrator the mother and his brother also, okay. So, what is the moral of the story? We have to be very careful before making a decision or before taking a step. Clear? Yes. Okay class, as I have told you already, uh, we are going to learn some slang expressions that are given in the lesson. It will be very useful for uh, you to understand what th those are actually, okay. So look at the first one, must have got away, what did he like? Okay, so this was a, a dialogue of a police officer. So what is the meaning, actual meaning, must got away, what was he like? Okay, so this is the proper English and this is, uh, the, the, the first one given is, it is just a slang. Okay, look at the next one, look here, Joe. So what does it mean, look here, Joe. Clear. Yeah. Look at the third one. No sign or nothing. No sign of anything. So that is, that is what expressed there. Look at the next one. Back to the lines, your goddamn. So these are the words of the grandfather. What does it mean? Back to the lines, you goddamn. He is just scolding them. Okay. Uh, so look at the last one. What was the ID of all them cops tarry hooting round the house last night? What, what does it mean actually? What was the idea of all the cops tarry hooting around the house last night? So here tarry hooting is, means that loitering and making a lot of noise. So that is the meaning of tarry hooting. So clear? These are the slang expressions uh, written in this prose. So that's all. Okay class, that's all about this lesson. Um, I hope you all understood uh, clearly. Uh, just go through once in your textbook uh, completely and then uh, read the uh, hard words and uh, memorize their meanings that will be very useful for your future purpose okay so let's meet in the next video thank you have a nice day